Hi guys, today I thought I'd show how to do an Ubuntu server installation. Ubuntu is a Debian uh, variant Linux distribution. It's also one of the most popular Linux distributions out there. It is completely free to get up and started. So if you want a Linux server, you don't know which one to go to, Ubuntu is probably your choice. It's free to start, it's very popular, it has long-term support, so you want to make sure that you get something that's getting patched and getting supported. And if you want optional, you can actually pay for additional support through the company. So to go ahead and watch it, I'll show you how to do a quick installation of Ubuntu Server, and then it gets you guys up and running in a server, Linux server environment. The first thing we're going to do is go to the Ubuntu website, ubuntu.com. They have tons of um, products on here that are free to download and install. Just a great, great um, company that puts out tons of open source products. So highly, highly recommend to at least take a look at some of them. Today I'm doing Ubuntu Server, but Ubuntu Desktop is also an excellent uh, Linux desktop environment if you're interested in that. But today I'm doing an install of Ubuntu Server, and I'm doing the long-term support, so 1604 long-term support. It's actually guaranteed through 2021. So this is a great product if you want to install a server environment. So this is not going to come with a desktop environment by default. Um, so this is something that's more command line, pure server environment, and you have to be pretty comfortable with the Linux command line if you're going to be setting up a server environment. So I would recommend, um, you know, brushing up on your Linux skills. So I'm going to go ahead and download this. It's uh, just over under a gig, so it just probably take a few minutes to download. So you can install this on a physical system, on a virtual system. Today I'm doing it on a virtual system. So this is great for testing. If you want to set up a test environment or test a product in Ubuntu Server before setting it up on a physical machine, um, Oracle VirtualBox or VMware Fusion, or a VMware player are actually great products for that. So today I'm just creating a virtual machine here in my Oracle VirtualBox. I'm going to go ahead and call it Ubuntu Server 1604. And we go ahead and click next. It's going to automatically put it in the type and 64-bit is pretty much standard now. So once I select that, I'm going to go ahead and select the hard drive. I'm going to create a new virtual disk. And there's a few virtual disk types depending if you're using virtual um, VMware or Hyper-V or VDI is VirtualBox disk image. So if you want to import it somewhere else, this might be useful here. So I'm doing dynamically allocated, so it's not using up all the 16 gigs I'm about to allocate to it all at once. It only allocates to this space as needed, so that's why dynamic versus fixed. And you see that dynamic or um, dynamic allocation of disk in a lot of places now is becoming more common in different storage solutions. So I'm going to go ahead, I like to organize my virtual machine, so I go ahead and organize it, add it to my Linux server list. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up. The first thing it's going to ask is for startup disk, the boot disk. I'm going to point it to the ISO, so that's one of the nice things about um, Oracle VirtualBox is you can do everything with an ISO here, nothing extra needed. So once I boot into it, I'm going to get presented with this prompt. It's all tab-based, no mouse interaction, no real GUI here. This is the server environment. So I'm going to go ahead and hit up or down and hit enter and select install Ubuntu server. So there's some other options here. Um, I'm not going to worry about those right now, but go ahead and click on Ubuntu server and it's going to bring up to, of course, the language. So it's going to go through very basic. If you're done Linux install, it's pretty basic. Select region. Select the language, the region, the keyboard. If you're in another country, you could go ahead and try to have the keyboard detected. It might be easier. So if you click on detect this keyboard, yes, and it's going to have you press a few buttons on the keyboard to determine what type of region in the world you are and what kind of keyboard you might have. So I was able to detect mine relatively easily that I have a US keyboard by just answering a few simple questions about which characters might appear on the screen. Now the installer is going to do a hardware check, see if the hardware is compatible. A lot of uh, hardware is now compatible with these Linux installs, so that's really great. Years ago, this was actually pretty difficult to get drivers for different devices, but nowadays you find that the Ubuntu environment actually supports a lot of different hardware. So being able to do the hardware scan and having a working audio card, network card, or video card is much easier than it was in long in the past. So that's great. So now once it's doing that, and that's going to come up with our... Um, 
Once it detects the network settings and the hardware settings, it's going to ask about what kind of server we're going to be setting up. If it's um, what services or what um, environment we might be, or packages we want to install initially. Of course, you could always go back and install more packages. So let's put in our host name. So if you have DNS, you make sure you want your DNS entry in there. If you have an IP reservation, you want to make, it, and make sure it matches with your DHCP reservation. So we got our host name, I did call it find data. And now I click OK, a full name of the first user. So you can put in the initial user and this user will have pseudo rights by default. So it'll be a non root user, but with um, pseudo privileges. So if you notice here, it never does prompt you for a root password during this install. It only prompts you for this user. Um, of course, you can go in there and add a root password after the installation and configure that if you want root access, but it's trying to let you know that it's good practice. If you want to encrypt your home directory, I generally don't. It, it does add overhead. If you're reading a, a lot from your home directory, you might not want that extra overhead of the encryption, but if you want to make sure it's secure, you might want to go ahead and do that. So it's going to select your time zone. It tries to automatically select it. If it gets it right, go ahead and click yes. If no, you can change that. Now it's going to do format our disk. So it's going to go through our disk. It's going to try to give us the option to use a logical volume manager, LVM. LVM is, allows for very flexible reconfiguration of your storage. I highly recommend doing that. So I choose to let it to automatically configure with logical volume manager, configure my storage. You can, of course, go and add additional storage later, additional drives, and expand your logical volumes. So I'm letting it use the entire disk using logical volumes of the entire disk that I allocated to this. So it detects 16.7 gigs available. Click New. It's going to go ahead and give you a small summary. You can change this if you like. Um, when you write to this, the disk will be lost. So anything, any content you have on this disk will be lost once this write occurs. So just be careful before you um, commit. Now it's going to start creating the file systems, ext2, ext3, and it's going to start installing the system to disk. So it's going to start copying content. We still haven't selected the software packages, so that's coming up. Now if you're behind a proxy, it's going to go ahead and prompt you for that information. Um, go ahead and put that in there if you do it for security reasons, to leave your network or to come into your network. A proxy is really powerful for redirecting tra network traffic and also for caching. Um, so it can configure, continue configuring your packages. Once it's done doing that, it's actually going to come and ask you about your updates. So if you want to do automatic updates, if it's managed by landscape, you should definitely, if you're putting this system into production, do updates. So... But if it's in a production environment, you want to be careful about your updates. Updates can cause issues. So install security updates automatically might not be the option you want. You probably want to go with manage system and set up landscape. But of course, if you don't have time for that, do no updates now and then do updates appropriately as, you, as your system is in production. So just be careful because updates can break whatever service you're offering on this system. So for today, I'm just going to go ahead and say no updates. But again, very important to do updates. Just be sure to do it carefully. Now we're going to go ahead and select what type of server we want. Now selecting this will select some predetermined packages. So I'm saying open SSH and I want to manually select packages as well. Now it's going to continue installing on our hard disk. It'll take a few minutes for this. Now it's going to prompt you for the bootloader, the Grub bootloader. It controls um, the boot record. It's going to install itself in the master boot record. So on your system um, powering on, the master boot record will inform your hardware, hardware what it's booting off of. So it's telling the system where to boot from. So it's asking permission to install the Grub bootloader in your master boot record of your hard disk. So you want to say yes, of course. Of course, if you already have Windows installed, you're trying to do a dual boot, you want to be careful that you don't um, remove the ability to boot from Windows. Not so much that you delete the file system or the partition, it's that you're able to still boot. So if this is a dual boot environment, just be careful about the group bootloader. You might have to go in and modify it to point to your Windows install as well. But of course, if this is a Ubuntu server, you probably don't have a dual boot. 
So it's going to go ahead and finish the installation. You say continue. Um, this is probably one of the easiest installs. So now you go ahead and select. That's the grub bootloader right there prompting you. It's going to go ahead and restart. It's doing a hardware check. And then it's going to go ahead and start up the um, startup scripts. So the, all these OK right here are the startup scripts in your ETC RC files. Now we come to our boot screen. So you can log in with the user you created. So I created my data user, entered my password, and then you're logged in. Again, this account has pseudo rights. So just remember that um, you didn't log in as administrator, but you have to use sudo to run admin accounts. So now you can go ahead and run commands and go ahead and enjoy your new Ubuntu server environment. Again, this is a great operating system. It's completely free to run. So you go ahead and run it in your environment and run your servers as needed. So if you're a small to mid-sized company and you can't afford to pay for any support, that's okay, you can still run this. There is Ubuntu support out there you pay for. So if, you, um, if your company can't afford support, I would highly recommend getting the support from Ubuntu. It's a great place to get um, assistance when you're having server issues. And when you have server issues, you're probably going to want that assistance. Thanks for watching. I hope Ubuntu is the server of your choice. Ubuntu is a great distribution, has tons of features, is supported, and it's the number one choice Linux distribution out there. So go ahead and give it a try. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye.